in my garden. In the back, I've got all these smooth river rocks, and I started creating river rocks, um, little totems, or what, what's the trail marker name? They have a, the trail markers that you've got, the beginning of trails, but there's a, some other really cool little name for them. Anyway, that was kind of the inspiration, so I started making really smooth ones, just really pretty glazes and just smooth stacks. And then one day, I started pinching faces out of them. And I'm like, that's much more fun than making the smooth stacks. And so that's what we ended up doing. And um, I think about what I'm creating now and giving them titles. So this guy's worry warts. Top of them has a wart. There, this one right here is angry men. <laughs> and what was interesting to me in creating them, it was just not only working with the clay of course opening it up and creating something that you really didn't have an idea what it would be show you know turn out like at the end but also looking at people and our expressions and our creases and what happens when you're angry and what happens when you're smiling what happens to your cheeks how do your eyes changes and it really kind of gave me a basic sculpture lesson in just the process of doing it so this one's called bird brains and then one of my favorite since I sing is quartet. You can kind of tell who's the tenor from the baritone, can't you? So I thought what I'd show you guys is how to make them. And in the time that we have, um, you might be able to make a whole stack or not. I use a real white, white clay. It is um, the contrast between the oxides and the white, it's too much. I like the little, little more of a skin tone. So use a caramel color. So sandstones and T2 work great. So take the ball, uh, take the clay that you've got in your hands and form it into a ball. Just knock the corners out. Try not to incorporate any air bubbles and form there's four. Form it into a ball. The very first one I made looked like my husband <laughs> and I thought oh my gosh I wonder if he'll know that and after I was done I took it out to the kiln and I gave it to him he's like I go does this look like anyone you know he goes it is familiar didn't get it right off but then I said, I guess you sculpt what you know right <laughs> you know Ray's good nose Jerry <laughs> and he has a very protruding mustache so it doesn't have to be a perfect circle but enough to get us going. And the reason you need a circle is that we're gonna cut this in half. Can't make a solid form into the kiln, that's just gonna blow. So it's really important to hollow these out. When you have a circle, cut it in half. Make sure you keep it rather cupped and not open. Thumb goes in, good pressure, and pinch. Can you imagine making these and making them for shows or sales after a while you're <laughs> And you can use two hands and keep it on there if that's easier, because it is tiring on your tendons. The trick here is you can go, let me see, maybe a third of an inch, and make sure it's uniform. So from the bottom all the way up the sides, this will do two things. It'll be a lighter piece, because you can imagine these sculptures get heavy after a while and it will dry quicker in your firing and the benefit is you're going to get way more out of your clay and a lot nicer bigger piece how thick do you like to go i like to go about i'll show you i'm trying to get it even do as i say not as i do so let's pass this guy around Pretty uniform bottom to top. Is it okay if I'm closing it or do you not want to? Um, you want it pretty half and half. Okay. Yeah. So no closing it, a really nice open bowl. And that's just going to give you better uh, foundation for adding the other half to it. Yeah, so we're connecting these again, but we're making them hollow because a solid form is just not going to work in the kiln. Even though it seems really wedged and there's no air, 
it'll blow up. So they don't have to be perfectly the same as far as size, but the, they do need to match. Make them equally as far as thin, make the mouth, these pretty this much the same. So if you have one, my right one's a little bigger than this, it's not bad because I'm gonna be forming this in a bit, but don't put them together yet. And don't make your edges get too thin. You need some lip to connect. Now, when you do smaller pieces, when I connect these, I've encapsulated air and the air itself really holds it firm. However, we're also poking eyes in it and doing other things that I notice once you, in, you know, in, in, in what is it, <laughs> impale your, your solid piece, it's gonna deflate. So I use newspapers. It makes a little smokier in your bisque firing, but it supports your piece and you can really work with it. So roll it up tightly and get it in each half. You want, when you put these halves together, you want it to be a little difficult to do so. So don't just have it loosely stuffed. So I would say one to one and a half pieces on each side. Not so much that it breaks it when you're trying to stuff it. Okay. Okay, so I've got two about like that, that when I push it, it's, it's not gonna fight me too much, but it'll be a solid. Now, before you do that part, take a fork or your scoring tool and really well, messy, jagged score marks here and on the other side. On the score marks, pat water. Don't rub it. If you rub the water on, you're going to rub away your score marks. Pat some water. And on the other half as well. Then you'll connect. As you connect, move one piece of, you know, side of the clay. Either direction, it doesn't matter. Just get that seam sealed. Don't worry about how it looks right now as you seal the edges because we're going to uh, fix all that. The most important thing is to remove that seam back and forth. So you have a really rough piece like that. Now, if it's an odd shape, it's okay because I've seen some odd yeah, heads. <laughs> um, once you have this, and I'll take a little break and let you catch up after that. I'm just giving you ahead of time. <clears throat> once you have this, you're going to take a paddle and paddle it. And what this does is it compresses the clay, which makes it super strong. And it's going to give you a nice skin surface. So really loose wrist and paddle. See the difference already between this part here and this part. It'll also close up your seam. So tell me, do you get as much joy from this as I do? <laughs> Had a bad day? Making my husband's face again. No, not that precious man. Rotate it in your hand so you don't just have a flat pancake. If you've got little nooks and crannies, you can smooth it in simply by moving the clay. But they're not a bad thing either. You can make a gnarly scar-faced looking pirate or something. And now you're gonna, oh, put a little score mark on it and some water. Can we share? Sure. Can you share? <laughs> Scoring here really well on both sides. Uh -huh. Patting water on, don't rub it, it'll rub the score mark away. And then you're gonna put it together and when it's together, move the clay from one piece to the other vertically. Oh, Don't worry that it looks all funky because when we paddle it, it's going to fix that. Okay. We know when we're satisfied with the surface. I mean, yeah. Ah, well, I guess where there's no seam showing, oh, okay. it looks like a ball now. No one would ever not know that it's not a solid piece. 
So once you have it all spanked and you feel good about it, you can start to shape your head. Now for totem, or the, they are kind of totem or rock stacks, the bottom one, you could physically make look more squished. You have a tall, tall totem. I had one called Middleman. And the Middleman, you know, you think about our economies in the world, and, the, and it's the guy on the bottom that makes the least, the guy in the middle that does okay, and the guy on the top that's doing pretty well too. So my Middleman would physically look squished up like this. So I might want a flatter one if he has a lot of weight of the world on top of him. You, you know, it just it totally depends on what your image is going to be. Um, I wanted my baritone to be very large compared to my tenor. So I just shaped his face a little more open as well. So it just, you know, start to think about it. And smooth it out. And then start to shape your head. Now, I do very silly ones, but you can do really serious, pretty, you know, realistic looking sculptures as well. Um, you don't have to be goofy. It's the same thing that's going to apply. So I might just make my head, think about your jawbone being wider, the cheeks being wider, and just start to shape your head softly with your hands. You know, our skull is very large. If you were to do a serious sculpture, our back of our heads, if you look at each other, which makes you look at people more, the back of our heads really there's so much mass here than there is here. So um, picking it up at the back of the head to make it look more like a sculpture is more realistic. Again, these are rocks, these are boulders. So rocks come in many shapes, basically round with variation. Think about where you want your eyes. And the way that I do eyes is I'll, I'll face the piece and kind of press in two at the same time. Now, if, you, if you're, and I'm going to refer to sculptural works versus the, the little rocks we're doing as a kind of a guideline. If you look at your partner next to you, when we draw, we often put our eyes right here in the middle, but our eyes are up. Actually, I'm sorry. Our eyes are actually in the middle if you look from the top to the bottom. So the challenge I had with these guys is that if I would do the eyes in the middle and my face down here, I didn't have a lot of surface for them to look at. So before I even start, make a flat part so he's going to lean up a little bit. If they're leaning too much this way, you're not going to get all your features in. That said, the next totem is going to be here, or the next uh, head's going to be here. So you don't want all his features to be up here. So you kind of have between this spot and this spot to get it done. So a very elongated face gives you a little more surface to work on versus a round squatty one. So there's some guidelines to go by. You also have to make the top very flat when we go for the secondary piece for it to sit nice. It doesn't off, always sit nice. So what I've done, that's one that does sit good, is I get little felt pads behind them to make sure they're not leaning far too far back. You can always adjust them after firing. All right, so that said, my eyes are gonna go higher than normal. I guess that's my point. So I'm going to pinch in here this way, not going through. That's why we made it kind of thick, just two eyes. And this is gonna start to form that ridge bone on top and your eye socket. And the best class I ever took was with Linda Mao. Have you guys ever taught, taken a class from Linda? Mm -hmm. Our dear Linda that knows more than she should know. Mm -hmm. um, Linda Mao. Mao? Okay. And she said when you build a face, build it. Don't just add clay to it, but build it like you have. So we have eye sockets. So instead of just putting an eye on top, pinch two sockets in. And they're big. So then I'm going to add two eyeballs. And what I'll do is I'll take one piece of clay, so they're about the same, and break it in half. Roll two little balls. Score where they're going to go. And score on the piece where they're connected. Doesn't have to. Yes. 
Oh, you could. Yeah. Absolutely. And at least I have to do that because I never make the eyes the same. You never make them the same? <laughs> no matter what I do. That's a good idea, Vicki. Yeah. A little water dipped on them and squish them in. And they look really silly now. Don't worry. They're, we're going to do more to them so they're not just an alien eye. <laughs> the more, uh, the sh more shallow you have your mm -hmm. indentation, the more buggy his eyes are going to be, mm -hmm. which is perfectly okay. fine. But I would go even maybe a little more. I know. Not popping through, right? Yikes. But a bug eye is hilarious, too. That's true. Because these are comical. I would go even a little more deep. About like that. And you can kind of feel as you're pushing in. If it really gives, then it's quite shallow. Pull out a little nose. And you have a choice. You could pull it out by literally pinching it open. A little low behind, a little under here, a little pinch here, and start to bring it out. But, oh, he looks very silly now. I actually like to add a nose, because I like my noses to have character. Yeah. So a small piece of clay, however your nose is going to be. And you're going to just form a basic triangle. Like that. Flatten one side. Can I see that again? Mm -hmm. Flatten one side and flatten the bottom a little. Again, this is, this is all going to add character to the piece. So it doesn't have to be perfectly perfect and symmetrical. In fact, I think I want to do like a fighter that would look a little banged up. Maybe a Rocky Balboa one. Now, this doesn't have to be hollowed because it's not that thick of a piece. So the only, you know, only large masses have to be hollowed. And to connect that, before I go any further with the eyes, so I'm not going to pinch it out like I was going to show you. I, you could do this on your flat piece. I was giving you options. Nasty score marks, really good score marks. Scoring on the flat part, sticking your nose on. Oh, he's got a sh good schnoz. And then moving the clay, and this is why we want to do it before we put the eyelids on, moving the clay from the nose up toward the top. Now you notice if you, we look at our noses, the most narrow part is right here. I don't have a good example. My family all have nice noses. I have this little pug nose. I think I, have, I, was, I was the youngest, one of the youngest. So we're narrow here and we're widest at this point. So narrow here means mine's pretty wide right now. But again, I'm not totally going for perfection, but I want it to look like a human. So try to get it more narrow there. And as you come down, don't connect the sides yet. Just connect the bottom and the tops. And it's roughed in right now. Your eyes are roughed in. Your nose is roughed in. Don't worry about it looking perfect yet. It's, this is where you just fiddle with it afterwards. <laughs> well, as perfect as you want it, right? Do any of you have shops that you sell on on Etsy? I have an Etsy shop and I, I threw a bunch of planters, just this size planters, and I put faces on them. And I sold out immediately. And then I started doing custom work. People would send me a picture of their family and I would do a caricatures of them on planters and get it to them. I mean, it was just great little fun thing to do. And I thought, who knew? Yeah. This one gal in New York sent me, and her father had this really big nose, and I said, can I go there? She goes, oh yeah, go there. <laughs> it was so much fun. And they all took goofy face expressions. It was cute. So you thought out of this little silly thing. All right, so I'm going to stop my nose for a moment, and I'm going to go back to our eyes. So for eyelids, the same trick. One piece of clay, break it in half. And you can do an upper lid and a lower lid, or just an upper lid. I take a small ball of clay and I make it into like a half moon, a flat half moon that's a bit curved up. I guess it looks like an orange segment. You know, a little bit of a curve to it. About like that, can you guys see that? Kidney bean, but flat. So about that size of a piece, of course, dependent upon how wide your eye is. So if it's wider, make it wider. Just stretch the clay out. Wait a minute, I can't see. Sure. My eye's bad. Um, okay, so you're making one of these. 
Yeah, and flat. kind of flat. Yeah. Yep. And they don't have to match. That's right. If you wanted to have one guy with his eye up, my if I put my eye up like this, this is my teacher look when people aren't behaving. I look at them. My mother's look too. And, you know, if I, if I hold my expression like this, this eye is very round. My eyelid's hardly there. This one's squished down a bit. So think about the expression you want to make. Don't worry about them being exactly the same. It's going to add more character if they're not. All right, so I have two of my little orange segments. Now think about placement. If I was to place my lid here, he would look very worried. He would have, you know, off. If I was to place it this way, I could make him look a little more angry. Up higher is going to make him look more surprised in his expression. So look at your partner next to you and make faces. And see what, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and see what happens with your eyes. <laughs> what this eyelid's going to do is it's also going to create a bit of a ridge brow bone up here for you too because our eyes sockets come you know some of us are more straight here some of us are deep deep set eyes that's what I love about this is you can't really make a mistake oh good except not doing score marks so really strong score marks on the back of this strong score mark where it's gonna go I'm gonna have mine a little cockeyed water patted on to help you stick I'm gonna have now you have to put a little bit over the eye now here's the trick so eyes on me for a sec ah uh, ah uh, get it eyes on me so here when I attach I'm gonna push it down I'm going to attach the back part only don't attach this front part don't smooth it out so to speak because that's where you want that ridge if you look at our eyes we have a little ridge there so only attach the back part onto the, so that looks like he now has, oh he looks ridiculous, but he's going to be good. And then this one up here, I wanted to change his expression with a little raised eyebrow, so I'm going to attach it with some water on my score marks. Up. A little more up, like that. So I have one kind of down this way and one more up. And again, only the back side do you smooth out to the clay. Moving clay to clay ensures it's going to stick. And also looks like you are not, uh, it's not a separate piece of clay. All one solid piece. So again, these are roughed in. We're going to do a lot of fine tuning on them. Try not to affect where your eyeball is. You want that kind of deep socket in here. You want it to be clean where the eyelid matched. Same thing would go if you wanted a bottom lid. A bottom lid, take two pieces of clay the same size. It's smaller, unless you really want to cover and have a squinty guy. I make a much smaller bottom lid just to give me that closure of a lid and instead of it being big orange segment it's a thin piece like that if you want a more sinister and squinting close that eye in and think about too well I guess when we close it in our cheeks go up a little so I'm gonna close that in a little rough it in do not Smooth in the top part of the eyelid, just the bottom part again. So you really frame that face. Now take a few minutes before we proceed to the next step and smooth out your guy. Smooth out any little indentations you don't like around the eye. And we'll do a couple more things that are going to make him look really... Um, Okay. To make your eye even um, more eye-like, you have a couple choices. Does anybody have a trim tool with them by chance? A loop tool? To make a, a dark eye, 
you press in with a big iris and it looks um, it's just a darker eye <laughs> for for um, for these guys for more serious sculptures if you want it to look like a lighter eye the trick is to to halo the the area around this isn't really perfect but like a brick with a trim tool to put a circle around it where there would be a lighter iris so a trim tool works great a large trim tool just moving it here and moving it there will give you that circle around the iris now for these little guys I usually just that kind of gives you the idea in a very not as pretty way but you got the idea you would make a circle around the iris for a lighter eye for a darker eye poke a hole and that's uh, all the way from these funny little guys to for the iris think about where he's looking so if this is my bottom piece he might be looking up are you <laughs> he's looking at you so wherever you want to put it so I'm gonna put my guy with his eyes kind of shooting up and to the right now you can poke through at this point you don't have to though but I mean don't worry if it happens so he's kind of looking up here to the right it really changes the expression once you put that hole in it really makes him look a little more you know like he's doing yeah it does so um, I've got wooden pencil tools up here if you need to use them to um, identify that if you want a little eyelashes like that eyebrows up on that ridge I'm gonna need more my eyes are really protruding but eyebrows up too adding more clay here and adding eyebrows and think about your eyebrow expression flat you know um, more arched in angry birds looking all of that changes it so just play with the clay one day what happens when I put it here what happens when I put it there making it especially your top piece this bottom piece is going to be stacked so if I'm stacking on top of it I'm going to lose a whole bunch of that top feature part so making a significant brow bone is not a bad idea because look what this will do versus if I put a lot of work into a forehead and his eyebrows it's going to be lost when you stack it but again these on their own are hilarious to have in your garden too neighbors really wonder about me <laughs> which is good and like I said if you wanted to build out a nostril two small balls of clay attached here and scored of course mushed on but I found don't do this at home children <laughs> by taking a, the fat end of a pin tool or any pin tool holding and flaring out you can kind of create your nostril smaller or bigger depending on what you do but hold it down and flare it out and I've already created that little ridge thing there the skin of the nostril okay that's how you do a nostril in and open so you can pick your nose you can pick your nose yeah just don't do it too much depending on how thick your clay is it'll bust through like I just did okay I'm gonna continue on to lips you guys keep putzing just keep one eye on me one eye on your stuff can you do it you have a couple choices in lips you can pinch it finger pinched in start to form it which I often do just to get get it going and I'm gonna want my you have to think about your your mouth too do you want it open do you want it closed since my eyes kind of going up this way I'm probably gonna make him smirking a little that direction too so I'm gonna open up his mouth even more so watch when I open it I'm actually causing more material over here that I can start to form in as a lip but I probably wouldn't let it be that alone the top needs some more doesn't it try not to pinch them too thin because our lips aren't 
thin like that, you can squish them down, start to make a little more of a lip there. So I'm happy with how this is, but I'm not as happy with how this part is. So I'm going to add some lip. And it's just what you would think, a coil. <clears throat> you can do it a little thinner on the edges. Leave some more medium in the middle. Score where it's going to go. <clears throat> Score the piece itself. As usual, water tapped on. And then adding my lip that way. Now lips get, <clears throat> excuse me, mushed on. Not as fully as other parts. <clears throat> you want to attach the lip, but lips are a little more separate, there, aren't they, looking than our, the rest of our skin. Even though it's smoothly connected, there's more mass to it, and there's color to it. Since we're not really working in color yet, then don't completely push it on. So I would, do, I would completely um, meld the bottom part but not the top part. Kind of like you did your, your eyelids in reverse. If you can't get in there with your finger, use a tool. But smooth with your finger, they're, they're so much better, I think. It is. So smoothen that in so that top lip is a little more defined. Now if I want to make him smirk in a bit better, I'm going to move it up here so he can really play with his expression. Maybe down here a little. Whoops. Maybe a sinister little scowl on his lip to match his eyebrow that's raised on that edge. If you want to build the lip up even more, adding more mass, the theoretically our bottom lips are usually fuller than our top lips. He could do the whole Angelie Jolie thing. <laughs> wow. well, Wouldn't be the first time. A little bird can land on it. <laughs> yeah. guy, uh, males have thinner upper lips than women do. So to remember too. Yeah, that's right, huh? If you're doing a guy, then a lady lips more full. Once their lips are on, you got it. Now it's just kind of putzing, changing maybe expression maybe moving down some clay on top to make it look more frowny or moving clay back and smoothing. Um, if you want to add some cheekbones, every time you add score onto it, if I wanted high cheekbones, I would add a ball and I would move it down to give it a little more structure. You could do a dimple in the chin, you could do facial hair, which is hilarious. Um, my barbershop quartet has those, of course, you know, real curly ones, um, pin tools for facial hair as well. But that's the basics. Now you can just play. And see if I look at him right now, he's fine but his left side's a little flat. So I'm going to even manipulate your face after. So right now it's just kind of tweaking it till you're satisfied. All with your hands. Make sure that he's flat on the bottom and that if this is going to be a stacking one, that he's flat on the top. What do you think? By adding some mass. So a ball, feel your cheekbone. Your cheekbone starts here, down to here. So, or you can just add a little, little ball on your piece and then form it in. So your cheekbone really is this whole socket area. And if I feel it, it's kind of a, a crescent, isn't it, from here to here. I'll have plenty of clay on my face after this. I like to put a little dimple in their chins. Everywhere that you make a dent, <laughs> when you um, finish it up. So when that goes into the kiln, it's a, it's a bomb. So you've got to make sure, do it now. Make your hole. So take your pen tool and make it where you can't see. So the nostril or the eyeball. Just a pinhole all the way through. Do you feel the newspaper? And you now have relieved that bomb problem. What I find on these, I, I, 
I like to glaze the back of them. You have a choice when you start to make these stacking pieces. You can bisque them all separately. And if you're going to do that, and what I like about that is that I can change the direction of them. You see this guy, I have turned a little different way. I might have one looking this way and one looking this way and one in the middle. So having them independent before you stack, before you stack them, there's a lot to be said for it. On the other hand, it's kind of nice to have one piece secure and you just dip it and you oxide it and you go. But I would go for the other, but that's true. And you're gonna stack this guy, put heavy duty score marks on the top of him, put heavy duty score marks on the bottom of the one that's gonna stack to him. Before you fire it, that'll give it tooth for when you either glaze, fuse them together, or glue them after they're all done. All right, so think of that. If it's gonna be stackable, you're gonna go home and make more of these, then score marks on the top, score marks on the bottom of the next one. Same thing for the middle one, score marks on the top. And uh, the tall, the last one just needs score marks on the bottom and not on the top. So what I will do is let them dry really well. We've added a very moist environment with the newspaper in there. It's going to take a while. Two to three weeks. If it's really good weather, two weeks. Um, fire them in bisque. And then <coughs> for glazing, I will do the backs. Just to finish it a bit. And it's kind of fun because it looks just like a rock stack. And then when you flip them over, they've got these faces. What I found best for the faces is not to glaze them, but just to use a pure oxide wash. And if you've never used them, you, can, it's, you buy a bottle from Matt over here at Clay Planet. I like the iron and manganese. That's what these are. The iron and manganese, you dilute it and you rub it on so it looks completely black and you'll think I'm crazy. Then you take a sponge and wipe it off and you get all this great expression in the nooks and crannies and all this great color. It just, he'll look kind of flat now, but once they have the oxide wash on them and they're fired again, then they come up with all this greatness. All right, so that's how you finish it. Um, if I have fired them separately, then um, I glue them after using um, E6000, works the best. Rubber bands around them to keep them adhered. You can also, if you find them, like these small ones aren't that hard to um, fire together. So I will dip half of them in glaze, oxide the front half. Actually, I do the oxide first and wash them off. Dip the other, put them together with the glaze and let them fire together and they fuse together at the glaze, at the glaze firing. So you have two options, either fuse it together at the glaze firing or E6000 after. Sorry, what uh, oxide did you say you get? Iron and manganese. Red iron? And it's OX2, not red iron, okay. just iron. You can do any color, but I think that's the nicest for this. I do too, I think it's the most natural. Yeah, it is. The red iron's a little reddish. Well, I've been using flame iron, uh, black iron oxide. Yeah. Now, um, I can't remember who the teacher was, but if you use black copper oxide, uh -huh. it will um, burn through the glaze, so you'll have little oh. finishes. But the copper in an oxidized environment will be green. It'll be black in a reduction environment. You have to think of that too, though. So I like this because it's black, regardless of where I fire it, or it's brown. Okay?